previously on Tessie Teams. You see a perhaps uh, three feet at its center uh, crater, almost as though it's just been carved out. And however it came to be, uh, its current occupants are a malevolent looking black sword of an indeterminate material um, and a tiny sleeping owl boy. How long have you been doing this? Which this are you talking about? Uh, helping people without questioning, worshipping Lathander, or listening to this printing press? Listening to the printing press. A couple days. <laughs> A couple days? Yeah. It is in all respects, save one, uh, the vermin you are familiar with. The only distinction is that uh, its brain is ample. Uh, indeed, its brain overflows. And the uh, arrangement of the type inside the drawer says, Make my acquaintance in the mines below. The rat that has accompanied the party um, is exerting a, a felicitous effect uh, on the individuals that are uh, around. All right, everybody uh, in the cart, let's go. Yeah, I just, just approach and, and hand on the lever. It's clear at this point uh, that something has desperately broken. Um inside the heart of this mechanism. Time is the enemy, the past, it threatens the fastest weapon. You wouldn't make it past a second, and that's the question. Play it brash and reckless or choose a cautious solution you thought was prudent. In any sepulchre, poker to will become the putrid. It's that wealth that I'm pursuing. No mountain too steep, but dungeon too deep to send expendable marks up to the top of the peak of beneath. They see you bleed, they come like sharks to it. While I swim in that money bin like Carl Barks drew it. So send your national parks drew it. I'll send them home in a natural box with a closed top and most of the parts included. <sighs> Save your breath for a cleric confessor. Death is a lesson and life is a tenured professor. But if you're seeking my official advice, sign on the dotted line and mission the twice. That teeth through your nose, bro. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> no, do it. <laughs> I'm, God, I've, 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 I, I'm just very, very weak to peer pressure. No, please. It could work. It could yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. No. Yeah, that's nice. It. Yeah, that's it. That's an up market. I want to waterboard myself with tea. So ask any questions you like. Uh, hello, uh, I am Tycho Brahe of Penny Arcade and Pass. Uh, I'm also a Minifus Harrower drone, CEO of Acquisitions Incorporated. But today, I'm Jared K. Horcrims, your internet friend. And I'm here to run a game of Dungeons & Dragons on the internet for my internet friends, uh, specifically these internet friends. Now, Ryan, I know that you are a professional D&D uh, &D man. Sure. Uh, do you have... I have uh, heartfelt introductions for every other member of the party. Now... <laughs> Do you have a way that you would like to be uh, managed or or treated? Sounds like you're trying to put your job on me. This is your thing to come up with this. You saw right through it, probably, no, no <laughs> doubt, as a function of your profound intellect. <laughs> but now that you've cut that Gordian knot, how do you want me to introduce you? I, I Don't put me on a spot like this. This is a trap. Last time he did this to the rest of us, yeah, I had one prepared, and he immediately called me a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, people, right. do, people get called dickheads. That's really here. true. I mean, that's yeah. You just have that ready? Well, yeah. <laughs> only only a dickhead would have one ready. Yeah. So you, you passed the I was test. all excited. I'm like, oh, I wonder what Jerry has got for my new custom <laughs> intro. Instead, it's an on-the-spot on the homework assignment. 
<laughs> non-open book test. No, this is like a dream you would have and not a good dream. No. Uh, I don't know. I'll come up with something for the next time. Uh, it's still bedrock. Um, to the right of my right, it's a coherent beam uh, of Lathandra's holy light. Evil and Marthane, everybody. But oh, the this is, is this the um, is this the somatic component? No, it's how she prays. Oh, for sure. But it's got to get worked into the spells. Well, probably. I mean, I've like seen her it. spells are by nature kind of prayers because I've, all her power comes from. I've her. seen it with my own eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, but the spells probably do like a really cool like pew, 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 pew. Oh, yeah. No, it's going to be it's going to be like a rad version of the stuff that happens in The Magicians. And I like That's this exactly show. what I was thinking. Oh, we're Ha-ha. still on the level, Jerry. See, I, I am like, I'm too into Magicians. I, no I one think. wants to be into magicians. No one, no one wants to admit they are. But they did. But the hand stuff—it's that's uh-huh. it's a war crime and it has to stop. <laughs> um, uh, to the right of my right of my right, uh, once more with feelings, it's prism. <gasps> um, Thank you. That was very cute. Prism. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, to the left, uh, there's just there's we, we just got the one. It's uh, it's been one week. Since we've seen Yitz Ben Attende. Um, and I think that that constitutes uh, all the mortals that we have. Now, you might note, Gathered Throng, uh, that we are down one Chris Straub, who is exhausted and sick, but not necessarily, not in the way that like you want to feel fear about. Um, we all know him just because we've been hanging out with him, and he's been sort of under the weather for a while now, so... Uh, he is not able to join us today, but he will he will rejoin us uh, next week uh, at the maximum power level. Yeah, uh, he lost the shot. He's done. Yeah, that's that, that's it. Voted it's, off. It's, so basically, we're talking about a situation where the show has become a reality program. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, never mind. With, <laughs> with no, it's just like the circle. He's yeah. blocked. Yes, <laughs> red pointers. I have God. Is that what they call them? Oh yeah. It's so Please. good, Jerry. Please. All right, D&D. Let's play D&D. I need to escape from a, a world where the circle exists. Well, I can help you. Uh, I can help you, Prism. Um, I, can, I can pit your character, who is a kind of, uh, you know, emotional receiver dish, um, into a context uh, where that sense will be redlined almost immediately. Uh, when last we saw our heroes, uh, they had... Uh, in concert, uh, pulled two levers. Um, Historically, this has been an optimal outcome. Two levers, you know, two uh, firm grips, and then obviously uh, the release. I mean, this is is what we're going for every time. Holy crap, Jerry. Happy (laughs) Valentine's Day. (laughs) It's inadvertent. No one, I'm not even, you, you know what? It's, I'm not even trying to do this. Like, and I'm not proud of it. I'm just as ashamed as everyone else is. I feel like I am with you, Are you? ashamed of me, but I have externalized it um, to another sort of shame vessel. Hmm. Um, uh, but no, uh, as I suggested just before the break last time, the uh, mechanism uh, just beneath this platform uh, that no doubt has served Sparata City of Intrigue uh, well in its meteoric rise um, to a, a powerhouse uh, of that coast. Um, the day that you bought tickets and decided to bring your family, uh, something important, something vital, uh, mechanically, uh, came loose beneath it. And so you have an opportunity, uh, a rare opportunity, you think, uh, to find out just how fast one can reach the 15th level uh, below the surface of Sparata, all the way down to the bottom of the mine. Uh, So it is slowly building speed uh, from the initial release, and it is rapidly building. Uh, and there is a howl from the mechanism below the platform. 
Do we squish somebody? Uh, you haven't, you, you can't hear that over the wine. Uh, God only knows what's inside that mechanism. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Is this, uh, is this normal underground experience? <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, this is the elite. Um, it's like it, I mean, given everything else that you've seen in these cities, it's been it's like this seems you can just tell this seems like the sort of thing someone would pay extra for. This oh. is the sort of strange occurrence, the kind of um, the kind of unpleasantness that people seem to prize in a way. It's oh. inconceivable, but there you have it. Welcome to the t welcome to the city. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't. I don't think I have too many coins, but I start fishing around in case there's somebody <laughs> collecting money at the bottom. Uh, so I hear. So we hear something like break <clears throat> or about yeah, to break. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You th you think that you think that a vital uh, hunk of the. Um, operating machinery beneath this platform has stopped doing what it's supposed to. Um, uh, in my heart of hearts, I know that I know mending and know how to fix this and yet am paralyzed with fear. So <laughs> <laughs> there's only shuddering here and no heroism. It, it helps to, it helps to see the, the thing you're mending too. Um, you could. So, I'm going to say that we've got about two actions, probably. Great. Uh, of time before this thing uh, arrives uh, at its final destination. Mm. Great. Well, I'm not a druid anymore, and I can't turn into cool things, so that's fun. Dude, so is, is your is your are the wall is the walnut instinct? You're like, See, maybe a thorn whip. You know what I mean? You you started <laughs> describing this scenario, and I was like, I'm fine. I was like, Oh no, I'm so not fine. Yeah. We'll turn into dog. I'm gonna turn into mush. So yeah. I'm gonna turn into. Um, yeah, I have nothing I can do, so I just chatter my teeth. You vibrate in place. I can't. There's nothing. All of my my spells are based on feelings. I'm feeling very scared. <laughs> Can we see where this is going? Can we see where we're about to end up? Uh, imagine that. Um, I mean, it's essentially like uh, an industrial elevator platform uh, going down, um, sort of at a diagonal. Imagine this. Imagine mm -hmm. that it is traveling diagonally down like this. I play video um, games. Yeah, only like too fast. Um, this is this is the sort of excitement you'd typically only see in the first few minutes of a DLC. So we can't. But is this like tight to the walls, or is there like an edge to see over? Yeah, it, you can basically see that it is attached behind you to something like a rail. Yeah. That is meant to carry it down, yes. But I mean, at the edge of the platform, is it sheer rock or is there like a gap and then it's, rock? <clears throat> it's sheer rock. Okay. Whenever it isn't, um, whenever a layer of the mine hasn't slid past you. Gotcha. Okay. So at regular intervals, uh, sweet escape is visible uh, from the ride. Uh, since this is something that that people would clearly pay money for, uh, Yitzman decides to enjoy it, <laughs> and the hands go up. She goes, "Whoa, yes! <laughs> and now we are now we are doing it." <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Hello, <laughs> underground ride. <laughs> this is imagine her going like like. Like, woo, ah, yeah. And then you just hear actual genuine screaming from next to you. She's like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, now we are getting in spirit. <laughs> woo! I heard if you jump right before it hits the ground, you'll, you're fine. So as, as this 
<laughs> let's test that. It, let's see Please. if that's impressive. In that's what I'm years. trying to see if we can see what ground is. <laughs> is high school is is high school physics impressive in D and D? Yeah. Well, <laughs> when you can boost it with magic and shit, it, you probably can jump right before it hits the ground. You can get it cranked now, or you can fly. Uh, as this, uh, as the platform begins to increase in speed uh, down this diagonal prism, um, you uh, obviously there's a the rush of emotions that would uh, that accompanies that for anyone, but you are beginning to feel curious. And it doesn't feel like your own feeling. Oh. It feels like it feels like you are ima imagine like passing through uh passing through a veil. And it's like you are yourself, you're managing this situation, which I think we would all agree is very intense. And then you it's like you pass into an emotional state that doesn't correlate with anything happening oh. it feels like it's coming from outside but there's no way to not feel it uh okay well that has me very confused and like distracted i guess i don't really so now you're confused and curious i'm confused and curious but what am i curious about everything everything like that mechanism the mechanism that's attached. How does that work? How exactly does that work? And then the grain of the wood, it's like, are these trees native to here? What the, f all right. <laughs> um, okay, I guess I just start, in like, I'll just go with it. Like, I just start inspecting things. Like, if I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be feeling right now, I'm like, oh no, this is, this must be right. And I just start, I get real close to the platform and just start <clears throat> no, looking at so, stuff. So it's like you're, you are absolutely just hoovering up. This is you, it was unconscionable that you hadn't sought out this kind of information before. Um, and you, you catch uh, sight of uh, Yitzbin's front left hoof. Now, Tell me about how does Yitzbin maintain these hooves? Or uh, is Yitzbin of a shoed folk? Oh, definitely not. No, no shoes. Um, neatly trimmed, though. All of the the weird horse hoofness that happens if you let your horse's hoofs go on. Oh, no, we've seen. She's it. she she. It's very important uh, for ease of of mobility and for combat to make sure that your hooves are in good shape. You have never, you, it's hard to believe, Prism. You've, I mean, you've never really looked at a hoof. Huh. You know what? I was going to play my violin as we went down with the ship, but instead, <laughs> I'm going to look at this hoof. It just kind of goes up into the rest of the, it just kind of goes up into the rest of the leg. It's yeah. Really look at the grain on this thing, though. <laughs> I just look at it. And I am entranced. It's like a big fingernail. Yeah, it's like a big weird fingernail. Huh, <laughs> I never thought of it like that before. Now there's, I will think of it. There's one of these on every, ev there isn't a leg on her that doesn't have one of these things. And they're all unique in their own way. They're all special, you think? There's, there's probably a, something, there's probably something interesting about every one of them. Sisters, not twins. Better check it out. Just like eyebrows. Uh, legs is like a giant finger. <laughs> well, um, well all right, so the, I'm checking out her. Her body's like a palm. Yeah, exactly. It's like that's where I was going to go too. Uh, we're we're of one mind. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I hate being of this mind. <laughs> um, do do I like? Does any of this? Let me ask you this question. Yeah. Does any of this information like satiate me or does it just make me want like to know more? No, you don't think there's a, you don't think it's possible to fill this bucket. Every, oh. every, every new piece of information just unfolds fractally 
into new questions, every one of which is a source of delight. Wow. Oh my God. Uh, this is great. I cast Tasha's hideous laughter on myself and I started <laughs> laughing. No, I do start <laughs> laughing. And I'm very excited about all this and I'm just kaleidoscoping joyful colors as I'm like learning about new things. Hee <laughs> hee. It's just like a, it's like a lava lamp, but as a person. Yes. Huh. Well, I'm glad I can have this moment of uh, like curiosity and like childlike abandon right before we turn into pancakes. Does anybody who can fly want to do anything? I fly. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of hover. You're gonna let everybody die. I'm a little owl. I can't. I can't you're help you. You're asking a lot. Still helps those who help themselves. Um. So it, it does. Does is there a sense, even though Yitzman's very very stupid, is there a sense of imminent danger here? Because there's some. There's a couple of things that I can do. It it definitely seems like this isn't how it's supposed to work. Okay. I think that the. Uh, Evelyn, what are you up to right now? I think that the display from Prism had Evelyn a little confused because she really wanted to like help participate in this joyful moment. But that's but, a weird one. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> as as the horrible sounds continue, uh, Evelyn will fly up and around and try to look under and see if there's anything that's obvious that she could like quickly fix. If something's hanging off, you know. <clears throat> the 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 haunting sound is sort of emanating from below this platform, and it's sort of flush with the edge. It's not really designed to be gotten around. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so you are basically just over it. There's parts of the mechanism at the back that are visible, but those don't appear to be the parts that are whining, it's some kind of break beneath it. Is there any, um, like the platform is flush, is there any railing or handle or anything on it other than just flat platform? Uh, essentially, it's it seems like it's designed, most of the, inter from a safety perspective, it's almost completely surrounded by the rock of the shaft you know, unless it's at, okay, is this, is this really what we're doing? No, it's always what we're doing. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> you know, I, I guess, I guess that is the game we Welcome operate. Welcome to the C-team, Jerry. Yeah. How are the balls? Yeah, they're fine, you know. <laughs> okay. They're pretty good, I, I guess. Uh, so I, the, um, essentially, yeah. whenever, whenever it's not uh, briefly opening out into uh, some part of the, uh, some other part of this mine structure, it's basically flush with these rock walls. And you Basically, passed, I'm you... asking if there's anything I can grab onto if I were to try to just like slow the descent. Uh, you you think that you think that you might be able to, um, you know, at the edges around the platform itself, there's uh, plenty for powerful weapons to bite into just purely in the in the stone around it. Okay. Um, Evelyn's gonna take, she has a javelin and she'll- In, in her, in her did, can we make a deal? <laughs> can we make a deal? What, we should just have a terms? section. Uh, we, we should have a section of the game where you pull out some weapon from your collection she used uh, and, to have two javelins. She lost and, one. And we get a chance to we get a chance to see them. There should be a show and tell portion, uh, <laughs> just from your kind dungeon master. There uh, is a person on Twitch whose name is Evelyn's Lost Javelin, and I miss them. <laughs> That's good. I miss them. So tell uh, me about the properties of this javelin. It's just a normal javelin. It's just a normal melee weapon. Um, but the way she wants to use it is, like you said, if she feels like it, this is a platform that could be pierced, she's just going to put that in there and oh, then like, I see. flag pull it. She's going to grab the javelin and then she's going to put her feet in front with the flappy wings and she's just going to try to like... like try to oh, I see. Back. Just get gets something sort of stuck in there. 
Mm -hmm. get some more friction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody said anything. No one said anything. Mm -hmm. You're the one that said it. Not every word goes right to that place. That's where you're wrong. (laughs) That's where you're wrong. Uh, Absolutely. So uh, guided uh, by the javelin, uh, assisted by the winged boot. Uh, yeah, gross. Are... <laughs> that's and like that. Now that's that the... one was. <laughs> nice, Jared. That's the only nice, island. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you got that weird. Nice, Still, dude. That's the only island of safety in this phrase. <laughs> the old wing boot. Um, nice. The thing is, I don't know how effective this will be because Evelyn's winged boots canonically can't like carry someone with her like they could maybe carry a small child with her yeah. or an yeah. object but they can't so they definitely couldn't like stop the platform it might be enough to slow it a little because she has like feather falled people with her boots she can do that but Absolutely. it may be that this isn't enough to do anything in which case she would do something else yeah exactly so basically you you jam this you jam this in you uh guide the boots into action leave it alone still and um, the the javelin that you remove from uh, from between the platform and the stone is like it's like the bristles of a toothbrush. Like it's been completely shredded open. Oh, it didn't go through the platform. No. Oh. <clears throat> well, that sucks. All right. So we have still flying. We have Evelyn flying. We have Yitzbin, and we have Prism. And we also have Quiver here somewhere, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. I, was Who saying, is I can grab Quiver. Pacing. Oh. He's probably a small uh, enough that I can carry the, him. Exactly. There's just an ongoing... Uh, compl- there's, a, there's a sophisticated ongoing commentary happening primarily in the throat <laughs> uh, from Quiver. All right. Still, if you can grab him... Um, then I I am watching Prism go through this interesting emotional exercise, uh, and I go, uh, I say, now it hardly seems like t- the time. And I touch you, and I cast gaseous form. <laughs> um, you are presumably a willing creature, and everything you're t- you're wearing and carrying, you go, everything turns into a misty cloud for up to an hour that I can concentrate on it. <laughs> and then I go, okay, now everybody's safe. <laughs> Is there a you can resist that if you don't want to be a cloud? Yeah, right? it's it has to be a willing target. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. this is new information and she is like ready to accept it. And all, what she does is she just like now is a gentle mist around each hoof. <laughs> yeah. There's like a cool fog, like a fog machine. Yes. <laughs> like a humidifier. Well, it's just it's like a like a Scottish moat. Yeah, right? it's exactly like that. It's just the gathered mood. around, All right? So, so, so it's been you are you are fine. Everyone else, this is how it has to be. Uh, you know, arms crossed, job well done. Let me find my D six. Uh oh. Uh, we're gonna say that you take four points of damage. Okay. As this thing hits the bottom, but there's no visible movement at all. Wait, what do you mean there's no <laughs> visible movement at all? I mean, this thing hits. You're proud of yourself for helping your friend. Everyone else is okay. And then uh-huh. you basically come into contact with the base like it's a stage. Ah, okay. It's only four hit points. So, yeah. I mean, all that kerfuffle for nothing, y'all. It's, it's fine. <laughs> arms, <laughs> arms folded. Um, and you have the first, uh, the first look uh, down into this floor uh, of the mine that has given Sparata, uh its much of its reputation. The truth is, is that you know most people know about Sparata because either because of its origin as Lylon or because it's like new money. Most people haven't been here and seen how people actually act. It's pretty abstract for most people. Um, but in this uh, in this area, I, I'm I'm pointing at something you can't see. I'm <laughs> so imagining let me, it. Let, let me let me let me paint a word picture. Um, uh, 
the bottom layer of this, you can sort of see, you can see shadows milling around inside this lowest area of the, uh, uh, of this shaft, for lack of a better term. And uh, the room itself has uh, very solid, almost geometric walls. Imagine that you're stepping into, uh, imagine that someone very interested in trapezoids had decided to finally do it and invest some portion of their, the wealth they'd amassed into a trapezoid museum. Oh, what the hell, dude. <laughs> the dream. I oh, am. Yes. You have no idea what's going on in my house day to day. <laughs> it's such a great pleasure to describe these shapes with you. Um, so, so essentially, you, you fall. You you can see out into this this room, quite large. Uh, the trapezoid type shape on one side is perhaps fifty feet on the the wide diagonal. And then the room itself across looks like it's about a hundred feet. Uh, and it, it extends out into shadowed areas, but this uh, initial sort of foyer to the underworld um, is quite well lit by torches and lanterns. Okay, so seeing this is enough of a shock to break concentration. Prism, you are no longer gaseous. So, 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 so I have one hand yeah. on each hub and then one foot on each hub and I'm just like a... <laughs> no, I'm just on the ground under you wondering what happened. Okay. I, um, I, I'll, I'll put Quiver down. Um, I want to imagine because Quiver is so proud uh, when uh, Still first tries to pick him up, he maybe wouldn't let him. And then like a mama cat, he like got the scruff of the neck. And oh, then no, he kinda went no, no, you gotta get that. Yeah. As soon, and then once the neck pressure hits, it's just like a, like a rag doll. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll gently l let him go. And then um, uh, uh, I'll go to uh, Yitzbin. And ha have you betrayed that you took any damage at all? Um, I, I think I probably was like, oof. But it's, it's only four hit points. So. Yeah. Well, still is a sweet boy. Aww. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to kind of okay. flutter next to you and ask uh, if you're all right. And then, I am fine. Even, I'm never better. Before you even answer, I cure <laughs> wounds for uh, eight. I cure hey. wounds for eight. <laughs> Thank you. I so love it. Yitzpin hates it. And he's, he's using his little birdie hands to touch your face. <laughs> He does it like in a very weird feathers. Yeah, there's like feathers and bird dirt on your face now. <laughs> yeah, 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 hold on. When you, when you say bird dirt, are you describing like a tuft? So here's the thing I don't know much about birds, and I don't really like birds. I don't know why I picked an air <laughs> <laughs> No, dude, it's because we wanted that tiny beak. Birds are, yeah, because they're creepy Super looking. Cute. Yeah. I wanted it because I wanted creepy. something that would be like borderline cute and also creepy. Birds uh, do have a bit of like a dander to them. Yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah. All birds are flying rats. Thank you. I would like to exit Yitzkin this conversation. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Tristan is logged off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Walnut, yeah, Wal Walnut left the chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, then, I, I hate it, but I feel great. And then I, I, I would ask, is everyone else okay? Am I still curious? <laughs> No, no. In fact, as soon as you, it's almost like the state change from gas to solid mm -hmm. um, has brought with it a mercurial new shift. Um, and again, uh, you have, you are intimately familiar with your own emotional states and those who know you well can tell just across the room looking at you where you're at. Um, you are as lonely as you have ever been in your life. Oh, wow. Whoa. Okay. Um, so I just turned like this icy blue and like, I'm just kind of like, like not under Yitzpin, but like on the ground near Yitzpin and just to say, just to say very, very like in the most mopey way, I just go, I'm fine. <laughs> Before the question? Yeah. <laughs> Flutter down 
from Yitzbin's face down to you and just start touching your face too. And then try to cure wounds you too. Aww. <laughs> or you got one button. For six, yeah, he's got one mode. Doing such a great job. That That's exactly what you should be doing for this group. What a great adventure you already are. Thank you. <laughs> I get bird dirt in your face too. All in your <laughs> mouth. Exploratory <laughs> fingers, uh, little feathers in your mouth. Well, no, and, and, and it's like that that sort of moist tuft sort of gathered at the corner of the lip. It's it's terrible. Evelyn has like a handkerchief out and she's like, thank you. I like I like the idea that still is like specializing in dentistry or something. <laughs> He's trying to get into that craw. He just doesn't know how to interact with people. So he just... <laughs> yeah, birds like that, preen uh, each other. Contact yeah, is like, true. people like contact. So he's just constantly like touching, touching well, faces. No, People love to have their face touched. No, it's going to be big. If we think about it like legit, it's going to be big face touches, lots of grooming, right? I mean, you're going to get in there with the beak, probably. Yeah. You got. But you Evelyn does notice Prism's like color changes at least. So she'll ask Prism, "Are you all right? What's going on?" Um, Prism just kind of looks off into the middle distance, and she just goes. Just one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of those days. No, I yeah, heard it too. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes um, it all feels like a lot, doesn't it? It does. Am I, uh, Jerry? Am I lonely? Like. For something, or am I lonely? Just in general, I just feel lonely. Yeah, I would say that it's like this. There is, it feels like you're on a diving board over a pool of loneliness. And if you really thought about it, you could start apportioning it to people that you miss. It's like, imagine being in quarantine for three weeks, <laughs> having not seen anybody that you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. right now it's just a feeling and it's like you could start to tug at it and trace it back. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's that's available to you, to be okay. sure. So what you see is uh, like her like very pink joyful color like at the top of her head and it's trying to come out and it just keeps fighting with the blue and you just see this like ever changing like battle going on uh, and she just goes, no, I'm I'm fine. Everything's, everything's like good. a thermometer. Yes. Is there any kind of like perception type thing we can do to see if we understand whatever seems to be affecting her or if, if we notice anything out of the ordinary? Because maybe this is just normal prism or maybe we notice that something is up. Oh, well, there's, there's plenty down here to notice. Um, this, as I suggested, the, the first of its kind trapezoid museum is uh, basically uh, stretched out uh, in front of the platform, um, and there and there you can hear the sounds of picks operating down here. Um, and uh, there's a, a what looks to be like a, a cooking fire in the very center. Um, supplies sacks. There's a couple mine carts sort of pushed up against the left wall. There is a uh, it's an exit from the main chamber, basically directly in front, almost uh, like a triangular shape cut out of one side uh, of the foyer. And then imagine from there on the far right is a uh, sort of dark looking shaft, uh, dark looking hallway. And then uh, to your left is a massive sort of double door. Double door. I normally, well, actually, Evelyn will turn to Yitzbin and be like, Yitzbin, it seems like you have had a very cool head so far and have really been able to determine the best next course of action. So as an adventurer, you have to continually be making new plans. And so now at this juncture of our adventure, why don't you tell us what you think the best plan would be? Oh, um, well, given I, all options available, um, 
let let us say for sake of argument that I do not remember why we are down here. <laughs> it, so I, I do know that we met a rat and that then we have come down here to make acquaintance. I do not, I do not know ingredients for acquaintance. This was not made clear. Whose acquaintance do we make? So in short, I choose the left-hand hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Great choice. <laughs> that sounds like a very well-reasoned decision. We're looking uh, for the printing press above all, right? <laughs> that's right. The super, the super press. The, the press avatar that, of Lethander Jr. Well, yeah, exactly. The press that prints presses. Uh, what is what the, did our message actually say? I can't remember. Make my acquaintance. Oh, yeah. In, yes. the in the minds below. below. The minds yeah, make below. my acquaintance in the minds below. Yeah. I that's wrote true. it down. Um, well, that's why you guys are the greatest adventurers I've ever worked with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, here. I've never seen this interaction before. Are, are you like their, are you like their teacher? No, no. I mean, I wouldn't Yesterday. put myself in, in like a, a, any kind of role of authority. I'm just here to help because I have been doing adventure, adventuring for quite some time. And uh, my friends from Acquisitions Incorporated asked me to come help these few with their adventures which it seems like you're on great track to join you did some amazing healing down there you're still out <laughs> i just want to get rid of this sword yeah and, do it right and, help. and it's just so it's 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 a, it's the sort of thing where it's like you'll be in the middle of a conversation with still and then remember that the sword is there it's like <laughs> It's, you're having a conversation with the gentle bird child and then it's just sort of like it's cut out of the space it's just cut out of social space there is this guillotine there's this jet black guillotine blade and it's like was it there the whole time <laughs> does it leave ever or it does it just sort of listen to the con it's like having an alexa frankly <laughs> it's 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 in it's that that level of sort of like it's omnipresent, but you forget about it. When you say that, and if anyone's listening to this show in a room with that, you just set it off, by the way. Alexa, yeah. play Vampire Weekend on Pandora. <laughs> All right. There. A little treat for uh, for a couple of viewers. <laughs> Some of you enjoy. That's the official soundtrack uh, of the C team. <clears throat> um, so you have decided uh, to take a left. Yeah. Um, and check out these, uh, the double doors that are here. Uh -huh. um, you can see that the, uh, the workers down here are, they're behaving in a way similar to uh, the people who gave you directions before. They seem to have something, they're operating according to something like a very simple set of behaviors but they don't, it, it'd be like walking into an ant's nest or something. Like mm. their behaviors make sense sort of in aggregate, but as, as individual, they don't seem to have individuality. And um, the truth is that Quiver himself uh, has a similar glassy eye uh, down here in the torchlight uh every uh, occasionally he pants but he's not really offering any conversation and hmm. in the capacious hood that he wears behind him uh it's almost as though he's become a kind of chariot for this rat <laughs> <laughs> love it uh, uh, which, which which is which is staring at the environment and the denizens of it with what appears to be substantially greater curiosity engage and engagement than first from the quiver. Interesting. Does the rat seem to indicate that it's interested in going any particular direction? <clears throat> uh, the rat appears to be uh, along for the ride. Damn. It's okay. guiding, uh, it's, it, it's, it hasn't made any indication that you've chosen a bad direction. 
by any means. It's not afraid of it. I have a question. Is a cranium rat an animal? I don't think that they are animals exactly, but it's never been easier. With the power of D&D Beyond. Well, uh, I'm looking at the Speak with Animals spell. And it it says you can communicate with beasts. And sometimes I cast this and then Chris Perkins is like, ah, 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 that's not an animal. It's a (laughs) construct. That's not an animal. It's a demon, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Well, as I suggested previously, uh, D&D Beyond has placed incredible power at my fingertips uh, as a dungeon master. Um, Cranium rats are tiny beasts. Sweet. So seeing that Quiver is not very conversational, Evelyn's going to cast Speak with Animals and say to the little rat, squeak, squeaky, squeak, 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 (laughs) which means... I'm so sorry that I haven't spoken to you yet so far. We've been really busy, but I'm Evelyn. What's your name? Uh, God, this, this is this went a different way, and I could not be more pleased. <laughs> and you don't have a name ready, do you? Yes. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> yes. You don't got to. You don't got to worry about that. <laughs> you don't got to worry about that. I Sounds have like that. stalling to me. <laughs> Rat's uh, name is Alexa. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> No, uh, no, no. The re- okay, no. Google. <laughs> Red hey, hey, Siri. Hey, I, no, no, no. It's uh, it's uh, Xbox. Record that. <laughs> um, no. So it's, these are all great rat names, by the way. <laughs> um, so it it chitters out a, a it, it it chitters out uh, an answer. It says, uh, "I have many names." Uh, but your mouth is insufficient. Mm, of course, my mistake. I know that stalling. <laughs> oh that no, you, no. You are part of a, a noble group of your kind, and I understand that I may not be able to understand that with with my verbal skills. But I'm curious. Um, you seem to be helping my friend Quiver here. What is your connection to Quiver? Let's see. He says, I was called by those I love once, many years ago. I was called Brian. And we may continue in this vein. And it gets, for a rat, it's become quite haughty. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Haughty with a body. (laughs) Well, Brian, mm. I'm just very curious about your connection <clears throat> to our friend Quiver here. This is, all of this can be explained uh, once you make my acquaintance. Oh, we haven't yet made your acquaintance. I'm not making your acquaintance now. It Again, if a rat may become pensive, uh, it pauses for a moment uh, and then says, you may think of this creature as my pinky i see so can you give us any insight as to how best most effectively and soonest make your acquaintance Uh, oh with these um it it says this this course will uh, bring you to me with swiftness she points this one the, to the left where you yeah to the to the double door and i like to imagine that from the outside this is a woman looking very deferent and respectful and communicative but going <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the lip like the mouth it's got to get very pinchy in the middle yep. it's mm-hmm. mostly like they're mostly like kissy squeak sounds oh right it's like mm-hmm. very very close um <clears throat> uh, absolutely yeah he he gestures with a uh, a tiny clawed paw uh, right. toward the double doors. Evelyn says, many thanks, and then says to the rest of the party, Brian says we should continue this way. Mm-hmm. Is what I said. <laughs> of course. It's obvious. Brian agrees with you. So uh, beyond these uh, beyond these double doors, 
this particular uh, hallway uh, has received, it looks like substantially less love. The rest of this, the rest of this has uh, a combination of sort of rigorous order and where there isn't rigorous order, there's at least light. Like someone could, someone could uh, make a sensible place out of it. Uh, but this corridor seems to lead, uh, uh, it, it leads in darkness, but through it, you can see a sort of lit, uh, almost circular room, uh, perhaps 60 feet down. What's at the bottom? Can we see the bottom? Um, the, the bottom of this? Yeah, 60 feet down. Oh, 60 feet uh, ahead, like, like, like down oh, the oh, corner, okay. down the corner, okay. not like down. Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, just directly in front of you. Ahead, got it. Yes, okay. yes. That word. <laughs> <laughs> We're the rat hasn't had an opportunity to nod or shake its head yet, and I feel like that's a success for me. <clears throat> Um, but the the hallway itself um, is rough in places, smooth in places. I, I imagine a situation where uh, the imagine that design changes, like serious uh, differences among a design team. Uh, resulted in this corridor <laughs> so even sort of dimly lit from one side and the other there is a lot of uh imagery in here that starts and stops seemingly randomly so mm -hmm. that it's as though you know a substantial amount in this imagine like a relief imagine like significant work has taken place and then halfway through it they are uh it's like they got bored mm. almost it doesn't it, it, the, the 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 where one of these three unique textures either fully uh fully carved um transformed into art or naked uh, rock clammy with condensation. These things all freely mix in this corridor. Evelyn tries to make conversation with Brian. What do you think of these um, art pieces of art? <clears throat> uh, he says this is one of my ongoing projects. Do you like it? Oh, it's um, it is so compelling. I think so. I agree with you. It's so diplomatic. I think I've, <laughs> I think I've really, really gotten to something here. So in this, in this town, this town is a project of mine. When you think about it, how so? I have suppressed their natural disbelief. In what? I would say in things generally. Well, belief is definitely something that I find very valuable. So good job. Well, well, exactly. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that you see it that way. The, there's so much wisdom that's, that dies before it has a chance to live. And it's, that simp truth? it's simply because people dismiss it out of hand. Now, most of the time they are wrong. And so the, 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 the rat in the, in the hood is, has, is now holding forth. So is Quiver, that, is, is, it, Quiver it, is walking in front of you. Go ahead. I, it's just, I just want to say hood rat. I, yeah. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Quiver is sort of just like a, a podium of sorts uh, for this rat to turn and have its conversation with you in the back. And um, Evelyn is like, at first she was trying to make conversation, but then she's like, obviously in way too deep and kind of doing the like, uh-huh, oh, mm, <clears throat> Well, mm, that's, mm. Un unfortunately, you've baited the hook now. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly this entity is very impressed with itself. Mm -hmm. uh, 
It's just that, yes, they're mostly wrong. Most of the time they're wrong. But when they are right, they sing the very song of the multiverse. Uh, they know things that none have known. And I have drunk this wine. And it turns around and sort of places a paw to either side of uh, Quiver's neck. Hmm. Well, I think if, you know, if you can get the, the multitudes of cults under control, it, it, it might aid in the you oh. know, finding of the truth. Oh, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. I've set these cults against each other to determine the greatest truth. As I suggested, some of them, some of them are not close. Some of them. The hell? Oh, all right. Everybody's on the stream now. Come on in. <laughs> I feel it's fair. Fair. Come on in. Come here, Ronya. I, can't even you, I know. Here, you want to be fun. I know that you want to be on the Twitch. I know. I know. No, Just please, come in no. here. Why are you? All right, enjoy. Stop hitting me with a spoon. Right, you beasts. You get out of here. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Does everybody not call their children beasts? I don't um, Then it would work with speak with animals. They know. Yes, exactly. Ooh. Tiny beasts. They are both tiny beasts and oh thus are subject to the spell. I love it. They lurked for a little bit and then they that were like, good. no, let's go for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, there's been a lot of this activity out here. Uh, what were we talking about before my tiny beasts came in? The other tiny beast. In getting the, the cults in order. <laughs> oh, he says, no, their, their esoteric conflict must be allowed to continue. Or else all my work here will be lost. Why? Well, I have, I have my own designs. And I will discover them here. Designs like the ones you made on the walls? Oh, I don't. No, I don't make those designs. You, you have to understand. The miners make those designs when some strange ethereal belief takes them. And then if it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't go anywhere. I am satisfied if we have a hundred failed attempts and then just a thimble full of wisdom. Well, I suppose that is the nature of, of trying to find truth. And if you're searching for truth, you will find it. And the truth being Lathander, I suppose that that means that we're <laughs> all one and the same. <clears throat> well, my, my long-term plan, that you'll be pleased to know, is to uh, join a pantheon, uh, much as Lathander has. Oh, you want to meet Lathander? Most people do. Yes, I as, as an equal. Mm. Well, I doubt that. I mean, that's that's a nice goal to have. <laughs> so polite. <laughs> wow. True diplomacy. Even in the face of heresy. <laughs> Yeah, right. Professional we all grade. Want to be like Lathander, don't we? I mean, we do. doesn't everyone? We do. Uh, <laughs> like, in some ways, perhaps. Oh. I think prayer, I think the granting of prayers would be a, a novel pastime. Yeah, helping people. Definitely. Yes. One of my favorite things to do. To be certain. We um, have a lot in common, you and I. <laughs> We're basically the same person. Yeah. I'm just a little taller. <laughs> so the, uh, the, this chamber at the end of this hallway that is stuffed with all these uh, tentative prophecies Um it looks as though it is. It, it's. It looks as though it has been made uh, by some process that you haven't seen previously. This. This almost looks like uh, it has a, a very organic cast and shape. Um, 
uh, it doesn't have the same sorts of uh, it doesn't have the workings that you would that you'd seen previously. It's more or less uniform, sort of like a kidney shaped uh, room in aggregate. Uh, to your left from here, you can see a uh, a path that leads down in shadow. And uh, just opposite this room, sort of at the at the southern end of that kidney shape, uh, you can see uh, another door. Good. Let's do it. Which one? Why don't, don't you know. choose Can't the path sense. this time, Prism? Oh, I. Uh, Prism. Let's... Yeah. How am I feeling? Tell me how I'm feeling. Then I'll. Don't answer. worry. I got you. Incredibly angry. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I lock eyes with you. And I am beat red in an instant. And I go, oh, why don't I decide? Why don't I decide? Why don't I bail everybody out? I have to do all the work for cover business. I have to come down to this place, which I obviously don't like. We almost died getting here. And now what? I got to do one more thing. I got to pick a door. Forget it. Well, that's totally fair. I'm glad you shared your feelings with me. I'm sorry you're feeling that way. Don't let me walk all over you. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, you're doing it again. <laughs> Miss Prism, is this because I turn you into gas cloud without permission because I am very apologetic about it? Yes, you should not turn people into a cloud without asking. I'm very sorry. I will never not ask again when we are <laughs> crashing through an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look at still and I turn, I look at still and I go, and hey, you, yes. I don't know. <laughs> Something with the touching though. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> and then I just oh, man. sit there and huff. And I turn to everyone else. I go, she got me the worst. <laughs> All dejected. <laughs> it is what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> at the, at the okay, we all make mistakes. Almost not as, okay. Almost as like a punctuation uh, to your uh, dressing down of still uh, at the at the very end of it, the blade just emits a hum. Mm, like at no. the at the <laughs> ape at the apex of your emotional response. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't move in any particular way. But there is a bass tone from it. Doesn't like that. Murder Sword will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like at night, it's just like hovering over Prism, just like ready to like. <laughs> but but there's a there's another path for it too. I, I can see like like culinary YouTube. It's just this giant black sword, but it's like bell peppers. Oh yeah. Love it. Totally, Jerry. Why well, is the regional owner of a Yum Yum Hut still will need something to cut with? So this is great. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so does so in in this outburst, my presumption is that you don't actually do it. You don't actually uh, direct the party. Is that correct? No, absolutely not. No, no, no. It was it was thoughtless of me to ask. <laughs> and then uh, I go yes. It was thoughtless of you to ask. And I was like, but if nobody's going to make a decision, we're going to go. And she just is paralyzed. <laughs> she can't do it. What, what does small brain friend say? Oh, Brian, which way to make your acquaintance? Obviously, we should have asked him <clears throat> first. I thought she meant still because he has a tiny bird brain. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Evelyn just misinterpreted. <laughs> yeah. No, he still did too. He's just like, yeah, what's the rat say? Well, the, 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 the rest of he's like, still has a suggestion, but then the rat can take over yeah. with the squeaks. <laughs> just like that big feather, like, hmm? Like the wahan, tuhu, three he, owl scenario. That's your roll. Right? Um, so, um, he, uh, the rat sort of, uh, rudders quiver toward uh, the door at the opposite side uh, of this room. 
I follow. Yeah. Yes. He's good. We go. And yeah. he'll uh, walk over there using this powerful uh, instrument. Love you, Chris. Um, <clears throat> and it, uh, Quiver reaches out uh, his hand, sort of like the, the hairless, the hairless folds just draping around the edge. Um, and as he opens the door, it is as though it, it's the same sort of situation where imagine that you had like pulled the seal off the top of like a jello uh, gelatin cup. So the door opens and almost as though like pressed close against the door, uh, you can almost see uh, the shape of the door on the inside impressed into this red, uh, for all intents and purposes, glistening gelatin. What? Ooh. Brian, what is this? <clears throat> uh, he says, run. And he turns <laughs> Quiver around and bolts across the room. Uh, Evelyn takes a defensive stance and tries to like put everyone behind her and holds her flame tongue greatsword up to the gel gelatin. I love it. And says, everybody, clear out. This is dangerous. Step back. All right. Now I need an initiative roll from all. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Dice time. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Guess I'm tasty. Plus three. Oh, boy. What a treat that must wow, be. Wow, what a stark oh. departure. See, Omen has negative one. I don't even know what it would look like. Even if I rolled a 20, it's a 19. Yeah, no. Dinar was the same way. I rolled a 13, so a 16. Yeah. Speaking of 19s, I got one plus four, 23. Jeez. <laughs> Damn. For initiative? I yeah. know. I really wasted it. <laughs> it's cool. My initiative is 10. Okay. I got a six, and I think that that is because the moment Evelyn said to run, Yitzpin was out of there. <laughs> she is way far back now. Well, yeah, exactly. Just like it's it's hooves on stone in an instant, uh, rushing back. Um, so Prism, you can see this, uh, essentially this red wall uh, in front of Evelyn. Evelyn uh, basically goes into like a like a threat display mm -hmm. um, against this, like sort of reflected in its own surface and it crashes down on her like a wave. Uh, what's your AC, Evelyn? It is... If I don't have my battle axe, the math is weird. I think it's 16. Okay. Um, so it does not. It basically, it, it, it falls out of this and washes over her. And the volume of it continues to pour out of whatever hallway it had been sequestered in back here. Uh, so tell me what's going on uh, with Prism now. So let me just get a little clarification. There yeah. was a wall of basically jello. Door opened. Jello. Door opened. Jello come out. Jello come out. Jello try uh, to hurt Evelyn. Jello on. Right. But it's not like this is not like a gelatinous cube situation. No, no, no. It's it, it moves with um, real uh, intent and cool. enthusiasm. This is not some uh this isn't just some animal you might chance upon this is something present and malevolent and conscious i shriek as though i've seen a rat uh <laughs> and um cast fairy fire on it and it glows in a oh weird a violet light what would that look like jerry yeah, i think it's a word it, picture exactly well gosh it, it would be it, it would it's going to give you, uh, it would be like, uh, imagine a dark uh, stained glass window. 
Ooh. Right. So through all those, through like all the physical surfaces, lens through the different ghostly lights. Nice. Sick description. I love it. Well, I do. I do what I can for you. Uh, so, tell me what's happening, Prism. Uh, I mean, besides everybody getting the advantage because of fairy fire. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, I mean, that is what's happening. Uh, but then, other than that, um, Prism just starts. She takes her movement to walk back, like maybe six feet, just like away from it. Yeah. So basically, get away from it, but not bolt out of the room proper no she's just trying to like size it up like she doesn't understand what she's seeing um and she's suffering an emotional hangover from before when she was very angry so nice uh okay so after prism we have still um so this so this uh thick uh red wake has basically broken over Evelyn Marthane mm -hmm. and uh, has now begun to glow and dance with strange light. What is the texture of it when it washes over her? Like, is it the texture of jello? Do pieces of it stick to her? It just, when it, when it crashes down, it's just, it's dead weight. It's just like the, the, the overriding sensation that you have, is just of pressure, like uh, trying to crush you. Like imagine just a imagine just like a wide flat palm trying to push you into the ground. Okay. Oh, so because Evelyn doesn't have her great sword, I didn't mention this before. Uh, she would have been carrying her shield. No, never mind. I'll take my action to don my shield next time. Never mind. You bet. It happened uh, fast. So this this crashed on Evelyn. It's still on Evelyn, or did it retract? But no, it, it is basically uh, broken over her and has begun to sort of gather uh, and shift around. Okay, so it's trying to like yeah, it's reaching. It, it's reaching over, sizing up the room. Um. Okay. Uh, at the first sign of um, uh, danger, or when the cranium rat said to run, or squeaked squeaked away yeah um uh still takes flight just not to fly away but just in a defensive posture kind of yeah, like just as a reflex like head level like yeah five feet six feet off the ground well doesn't want to touch it right yeah 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 um and then i'm trying to see what <laughs> he i mean he would want to he's he's a he's a support boy he's a healing boy I have nothing offensive. Um, That's not exactly true, but we'll we'll go into it. Say, well, I was going to leave that for the end. Say, uh, yeah. What is that? Who? <laughs> um, what I'll do is if... So, still will... Well, uh, let me ask. What yeah. does the sword do in this scenario? <laughs> uh, the, the sword acts after you act. Okay. And it's... It's got a mind of its own. All right. It does. Um, I don't want to attack the goo because I don't want to hurt Evelyn. So um, I will fly down, kind of swoop down, and um, actually try to push everyone else away. Get them away okay. from it. Physically sort of wrestle them out of there? Yeah. I love it. That brings me real joy. Uh, Evelyn Marthane, it's your turn. Oh, what's the uh, sword do? Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so it has basically crashed over uh, Evelyn Marthane and then gathered itself up opposite. So imagine it's almost like a slinky type situation. Mm -hmm. Like uh, as a solid, uh, as a solid entity, it has like been denied here and has now gathered its strength beyond. Um, and as it tries to essentially, so imagine that it has uh, that, that solid, uh, like the most solid mass of it in the center. Imagine that it sort of splashes out quickly and you can see not hands exactly, uh, more like the, uh, more like the mouth of a, uh, 
fly trap. So sharp edges, almost thorns at the at the ridge, uh, shifting itself forward, trying to close around you. And as it lurches forward, the sword uh, intercedes and splits it from the top to the bottom into two separate creatures. Uh oh. Thanks, sword. <laughs> uh, next up is Evelyn Marthain. So it's not on me anymore, right? Uh, it is not. In fact, it is behind you. Uh, and there are, and as you turn around, you find out that there are now two. Uh, each of them substantially smaller than the initial hole. Is there anyone? Um... I've seen it be sliced. It didn't seem to do it any damage. It just multiplied it. The The space that's taken up by the cre the two creatures. Yeah. Is there anyone else from my party in that space? Like anyone between the two? Anything like that? So Prism, you moved back about six feet? Yes. Okay. So at the at the four uh, is basically Evelyn Marthane, uh, Evil Gumdrops, and the rest of the party. Okay. So I'm going to cast Moonbeam. Ho ho. To try to nice. encompass both. So I call on the holy light of Lathander to try to melt the jello. <laughs> All right, let's see it. Uh, I don't have to roll for it, I don't mm -mm. think. No, they, they save, but there is, but you do roll damage that gets halved on a, on a save, right? Right, and it's a con, a 17 con save. Ooh! Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Good lord. Well, I guess we'll, we'll see how this goes. Seventeen. Uh, the one on the left uh, succeeds, and the one on the right fails. So it's a, a 2d10 radiant damage, so I rolled 11. Oh. So one will take 11, and one will take 5. That's great. And that's persistent. It stays. So oh. if they start their turn, we have we have some we have some familiarity with Moonbeam. Just in case anyone listening doesn't know, I needed the reminder. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like uh, you know, for the people at home. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that ghastly light uh, uh, of the moon sort of joins the uh, the other uh, strange lights already operating on these creatures. Uh, it's been a 10 day. Okay. Um, I ran away. You did. And I am currently uh, trying to avoid being touched by still, but also <laughs> I think paralyzed by fear. Uh, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to rush in, um, but I'm going to, can you tell me we're in this, this room or this hallway. Are there any like loose objects, rocks, anything like that around? Uh, yeah, yeah. Looking here, there's there is absolutely here in this in this back area. Like the rest of it is more of a working, like a functioning uh, mine. Things are cleared out. There is uh, substantial debris back here in this more organic area. Okay, I want to try to find something that's that is like a stone or or like a two by four. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing slashy. No picks or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you want a uh, slab, wide slab. Yeah. Uh, of stone. Uh, there, you have your, you have your pick. Okay. Um, I will choose the, the very finest wide slab of stone and I would like to cast catapult. Oh um, boy. As long as it's less than five pounds. And then um, it will fly in a straight line uh, up to 90 feet in the direction I choose before falling to the ground, stopping early if it impacts against a creature or a surface. Um, you have to make a dex 13 saving throw. Okay. And which, which one are you attacking again? Uh, I'll attack the one on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not succeed. Okay, so that's in any way, shape, or form. That's excellent news for me. I take I'm, I'm casting this at the first level because I got lots of spell slots there, but it's still three d eight damage. 
It's, it's so healthy, honestly. <laughs> a one, a one, and a three. Five points of damage. So um, with with a hope like hoping nobody sees that she didn't actually pick up the object this time. That oh, it, so she picked she picks it up with magic from a distance. So do you do you strain with the lifting? Oh yeah, it, there's a whole production that goes into it. Just in case anybody's like replaying the memory later, they're like, huh, I don't, I don't remember hearing you. It's been kind of hump, hump when she threw that rock. Oh, there's, there's straining. All it the comes, data is there. The, the, the rock. As I make sure nobody is watching, I go, huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as I cast catapult, it's. Hah! <laughs> it gets lifted up, and then, it, and then it delivers. Uh, obviously, right on target, uh, it delivers its five points. Five whole points. <laughs> Got him. So, it, so it is, in fact, launched, and then it comes into contact. Uh, it comes into contact with it and then just falls on the ground in front of it. I'm helping. <laughs> it, it just <laughs> piles up at the base, and then, you know, as though sort of like, Lifting a boot over it, uh, the creature uh, sloshes over the uh, sloshes over your missile. Okay, so evil, evil, and Marthane. Uh, yes. The one to the left of you here uh, is going to lash out again, but it is not uh, as powerful. Uh, the second one, the second one does come through. Uh, and so it's essentially just from seemingly random portions of its uh, body, the first one, um, the first one you're able to avoid entirely, but it's almost as though it was setting you up for the second hit. Uh, ah, Jesus Christ. Uh, 22 points. Whoa. And it, um, what was the it hit? Uh what did it hit? Yeah, what was the what was the roll? How, uh, how... Is, is 19 not appropriate? Oh geez. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um so it does that. And now I would like you to describe for me a memory. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Any memory? Give me a memory. I remember when I first met Brian. <laughs> nice. I love it. Honestly, it doesn't it, it doesn't entirely not work because well, we'll get into it. Um you don't remember Brian anymore, but you also take 12 more points of damage. <gasps> oh my God. What? We need to get out of here. I only got 32 I, hit points. I'm regretting that I, I said I was going to pick up my shield last turn and I forgot. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Now, Prism. So you have seen, so you see something like a, like a battering ram. So thus far, I mean, let's, let's be clear. What you have seen of, Evil and Marthane is somewhere near like a martial paragon and um, like a war priest. Like mm -hmm. it is, and you, you see something like uh, a battering ram strike her in the chest, move her multiple feet, and then she suffers again after there is no physical contact at all. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't love this at all. Um, so, I mean, this, uh, like, this gelatin, this sentient... For lack, of a, for lack of a better term. Pudding that we're fighting. Um, uh, I'm going to try... I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm going to try and cast fear on it. Interesting. Okay. 
um, which projects a phantasmal image of the creature's worst fear. So like, I don't know, is it a slug? Maybe it's salt? I don't know. You know what it is. I don't know yeah. what it is. Oh, I know what it is. It, but, sure. but it actually projects a phantasmal image of it, right? Yes. Um, and here's the, the thing is that each creature in a 30 foot cone, so just out in front of me, so just the thing, uh, just the things, must succeed on a wisdom saving throw of 15. Okay. I assume that maybe they're whizzy. Who knows? That, that's actually their shittiest. Oh, incredible. Incredible Wizard, saving. Super lucky for you. Everything else we're trying to make him do, these are the worst. Uh, I rolled a two and a seven, neither one mm. of which is appropriate for this. Um, you must take the dash action, my friend. That's amazing. But what does it see? Oh, I, I, I would, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a, uh, a picture of it like a almost like a misty uh apparition forms around you uh because this is this is what it's horrified of right mm -hmm. um and you see yourself basically in the center of a a wide wide pool uh full of uh, full of a, a pink to purple liquid and then bobbing inside that pool uh, rising to the surface that liquid pouring and pooling away um, you can see what looks like an exposed brain <clears throat> and these two things do they do they do two things one they join back together in the doorway purely out of fear um, and then flow from there back into the darkness of that corridor beyond. Uh, Revered Shadow Council, uh, Mayor Labors, please you. Uh, it is the break somehow. Oh, I didn't realize. I don't, I don't, I don't know how, Jeez. I don't know how it came to be, uh, but, but then is the facts. Uh, so uh, we will see you again very soon. We're gonna take full advantage of the facilities. Uh, we'll come back, play some more Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, don't go anywhere. Hello. Uh, I'm Taco Brahe. Uh, welcome back to Tennessee Teams. Uh, when last we saw our heroes, uh, Prism was making a type of goo uh, feel scared. And I don't know if that is a thing that happens in a lot of campaigns. I don't know if that's... I don't know if it's unique to, uh, you know, what we get up to around here. I do um, love slime and crushing slime and watching videos of people crush slime. So <laughs> this is like and, right up and my sending, alley. Sending pictures of people crushing slime to your friend. <laughs> yeah. Using all the toes. A lot of toes <laughs> stepping on slime. No, no. Now you guys are making it weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, weird. I'm talking about good, clean fun with slime. Yeah. Family right? friendly. <clears throat> it's true, but it's uh, it has flowed back uh, into the uh, darkest portion of uh, that hewn corridor uh, that it leapt out from so recently. Uh, so it is a, and you can you can hear it uh, bubbling with a almost like a cracking sound as the uh, surface of it is broken by these bubbles. And uh, so now for, uh, for a moment at least, uh, this room is empty save uh, the party and the very tiny new friend they've made. Well, I love the tiny new friend, A plus. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> He's ready to roll and he is, uh, stamping, uh, you can you can see him sort of uh, shuffling and shifting inside the cap, uh, in, inside the hood, and some measure of that agitation has now spread out uh, to first from the quiver, um, uh, whose toes are even now sort of kneading themselves against the stone floor. So 
the way that we were trying to go is no longer blocked and the uh, well the way that you the way that you were trying to go is full of an angry gelatin oh it's okay it, it just went retreated back, back in the it's room. just retreated okay. back into its jello hole okay so combat's we, like on pause, not over. <laughs> right. I, I think that I think that that's uh, that's accurate. Yes. Um, one minute to get away. Yeah. Can we still see it? Uh, you can hear it. You can hear it sort of lapping against the uh, the walls uh, of Correct. that tunnel as it compresses itself against it, but it can't really be seen there in the dark. Okay. Sure. Oh, um, full, it's a full-on slurp scenario, well, for sure. Uh, still was flapping around in everyone's faces, yeah, kind of freaking out, trying to get him to leave. Um, and then when this thing retreats, he'll still in a in a in a, a scared kind of flappy mess now fly in the uh, <laughs> Evelyn's face and. Uh, <laughs> Ask her if she's okay, but at the same time, kind of clawing her because <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. Probably doing more damage. At and, this uh, point, then Evelyn <laughs> will pull out her uh, her emoji shield, as we call it, her shield of expression, and it has a look of total disgust. The face does on the front of it, and she just holds it up like, "I'm fine, thank you, thank you." You don't mean that. Um, <laughs> and then I'll cast cure wounds at uh, third level. Oh, so. um, and getting out the good stuff. Eighteen. Well, thank you. That's so nice. You you should spend that on the rest of the party, though. I'm fine. I really am. And then uh, he perches on the edge of this shield and gets really like close, like right in her face, and just goes, "Are you sure you're okay?" Yes. Just, like thank beak, you. His beak is now kind of exploring her teeth. <laughs> like, are you sure you're okay? <laughs> You're so cute, but you really need to learn personal space. Oh, he's disgusting. He's covered in dirt. <laughs> I'm what? fine. You let's have a talk about personal space when we're done with this, okay? Yes, that would be awesome. Okay. There are. You're, are you, hold on, so you're, are you you're describing a situation still where there are visible centipedes? It's in on him? Yeah. Are there are they? I mean, how disgusting are we talking about here? Centipedes. Uh, yeah, what? he's just. Have dirty. you ever seen a bird? Do you know well, less about birds than I do? <laughs> well, I've seen. I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, and there's a lot of centipedes. That's all I'm saying. Not on the birds. No, he's not a rock. <laughs> they come out of the rocks in Animal Crossing. <laughs> but yes, he's covered in centipedes. I was waiting for that reveal, Jerry, and you jumped right to your face. <laughs> that was supposed to be like halfway through the season. No, it's like the, my, whole, my whole character is built around how many centipedes. There's centipedes in a in an owl costume, and they're all just kind of smushing around. All it's right, an oogie, fine. It's we an, all it's know an, now. It's an oogie boogie situation. That's what <laughs> yeah. you've been saving oh, for shit. us. It's that hey, centipede that. construct homebrew race. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's uh, again. It's on D and D Beyond. <laughs> all right, so you're perched. Yeah. Presently. Upon the emoji shield. In her face, as birds yeah. do. Poking at her. Around her face and mouth, because birds are stupid and gross. Yeah, this is just this is just confirming all of Yitzpin's theories about birds. Yeah. <laughs> Every still elaborate thinks he's cute. But well, she's yeah. gonna she's gonna put the shield away and take him like under the wings, like a little kid. <laughs> Hold him up like this. Yeah. And he's just <laughs> Thank like Thank you. That's very nice. To I appreciate it. Grin. This is what I, I keep thinking about, like, like the the subreddits that, like, Yitzbin. Yitzbin's got, like, a lot of subreddits about birds, like, but they're, like, conspiracies. It's yeah. Like, this just it's, confirms everything I've heard, everything I believed already. Exactly. Birds aren't real. <laughs> birds aren't real. It's inspired by that shirt. It's true. <laughs> so, um... With uh, uh, wiry energy, um, the both the rat and quiver uh, are agitating to move out of this room, and you can see them disappear back into the corridor that you uh, entered into this chamber from. The rat and quiver is an amazing name for a tavern. It Anybody is. out there? I, I want this that's icon. Really uh, that's the sign we want to hang. <laughs> Rat and Quiver. Uh, it's also an incredible uh, children's series. 
um, I feel like. So they're booking it for the other door? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Rat and Quiver had functionally speaking booked it almost from the jump. Can I, okay. uh, has, it, it hasn't been 10 minutes since I cast Speak with Animals yet, has it? No, you're, you're, you're trying to get, you're trying to get more for your, this book you're writing about cranium rats. Yeah, I want to run You want those primary him. source interviews? I want to bring the rest of the people running after him and be like, Brian, what was that? <clears throat> uh, it's face, uh, it's face scrunches. Uh, and it says. Scrunchy rat face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's clearly clearly unimpressed, um, and it says uh, if it had a mind, we could manage it. That's not really an answer, but okay. <laughs> Are you going to take us a safer way this time? Absolutely, one hundred percent. I like safer ways better. <laughs> so he. Uh, this combined being uh, leads you around through the um, Robert uh, Robert Wiggins uh, Trapezoid Memorial Museum um, <laughs> around through that uh, through uh, the other set of doors that went to the south and uh, it begins to, it's through this door, as soon as it's opened up, um, you can see uh, mine tracks, essentially cart tracks, um, extended out uh, to the south, um, almost 200 feet uh, through a, a well-lit, well-maintained corridor that clearly sees a lot of utilization. Is there a cart or just tracks? Uh, there, there is indeed a cart um, about 20 feet down. It's about half full. Uh, half empty. Yeah, exactly. It's like, is your mind cart half full or half empty? It's, I mean, it's a personality <laughs> test in one question, really. But you know what, though? It's like, it's, it's, it's made more complicated, it's been, because even half full, it's half full of platinum. Yummy. You see what I mean? Like, it's still pretty full, honestly, if you think about it. It's uh, still pretty full. It's just unsupervised minecart full of platinum? Yeah, I mean, like I say, the uh, individuals that you have seen around here, they have not responded to anything like the threat. Um, and they're working. It's almost, like a, it's almost like a hive of ants is operating this mine. Okay. Uh, what, what what else do we see? Are there people in this particular zone? Or uh, yeah, there's. In fact, there's. You can see people. Uh, this is wide enough. I mean, this is the the mine cart track itself is about five feet wide. Um, but this corridor itself is twenty feet wide. So there's substantial room on each side of it. Um, and there are. Uh, there is. Some of them are are digging in, uh, removing uh, wealth uh, from the, sh the mine shaft itself, and others appear to be noodling away on personal projects. Oh, pasta! That, that just happen to have their, um, you know, this is just this is their medium apparently <laughs> the, in the middle of the in the, the middle of project? their work shift. Yeah. In like the they're making the an shift. app? Or... It's like 3M. <laughs> you know, it's like a certain amount of your time each day you can invest in personal <laughs> projects. Yeah. And they working have, on that novel, banging yeah. that novel out. <laughs> and this, yeah, Lord. exactly. They're working on, they're work, some of them may well be working on novels. Screenplays. Uh, yeah, exactly. Everybody's got one. Podcasts. It's like, oh yeah. No, no, it's like, it's, it's like the, it's like the LA sort of waiter waitress phenomenon <laughs> yeah. where it's just like every miner has got that novel that they're working on. <laughs> um, Let me guess the protagonist is a, is a miner where he works in a mine or is some sort of <laughs> mine related job. It's, and he yeah, finds it's his way it's, out. It connected in some way to a mineral industry graphite or something. I don't know. But it's different. It's a cyber mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. What you know. <laughs> So, um, one of them still, uh, on the left, you can see like the last, uh, the last chip, uh, 
of a chisel and then almost without even looking at the work, um, the chisel and the hammer both find their way into um, uh, a small wooden toolbox uh, and then they, they raise a pick and begin working somewhere else. But there is a, a chunk of text that they have finished on the left uh, that says, what strange tools are these? These tools of desperation. Um, and on the right side, Yitzbin, uh, there is a centaur, a female centaur. Okay. Uh, with a belt that you recognize. The belt of strongness? And she is situated. It's, it's, there's some interpretation, obviously, here to be made. But she is, like, with ease, she has a mountain above her head. And that is the subject of this relief that's been carved on the right side of the mine shaft. Wow. Uh, she looks uh, extremely strong. Oh, my I... gosh. And it's just the whole mountain... And it's like, and it's obvious where that strength is coming from. From her body. From, from her, her muscles, muscles and body. And her arms and her core. <laughs> oh, yeah, core strength. Core strength is very important. It's, it's um, P90X, but for cent centaurs. Centaurs are mostly core. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot to work. There's two cores. Uh, yeah, there's at least two cores. Um, okay, so I am... As people, as the rest of the party is traversing through the, into this this mine shaft, I am drawn to this relief, particularly because there are no words um, and it's easy for me to interpret it. Um, but it's also it's just a it's it's a I don't I don't think I've ever seen art of centaurs outside of my homeland. Well, so I even I'm around just, here, even around here, it's not like it's a common. It isn't like this is somebody's bugaboo, like their whole thing is just doing this centaur work and like they're like in a rut that this is <laughs> this is pretty singular even among the rest of the work that you see here wow okay now in addition to the belt of strongness yeah does this centaur bear any other resemblance to me uh, the belt is the main is the main indication but in general as i suggested there's there's some interpretation here um, happening as well. But every detail that I've established, in, in addition to um, the specific designs of the Belt of Strongness, that's all here. Okay. So uh, Yitzman's first thought is, I guess my boy's just handing out these belts to any old centaur that's walking yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it'd be so sad. It'd be so sad if it went that way. <laughs> she can't even, she can't even appreciate it. And she just, She's mad at this, but the one person who is like kind to her. <laughs> yep, she's over it. She's she's immediately like, I guess they uh, all sent out of have belt now. This is very disappointing. God, you had your moment though. <laughs> <laughs> for for a minute there, I felt special, um, and I I want to I want to examine. Um, is, is the centaur holding platinum? Like what the, the contents of the mine, what's she holding? It's, it, it is, it is a, um, sort of an iconic, it's clearly an iconic representation of the mountain itself. So imagine, oh. imagine the mountain itself represented as sort of a craggy triangle, very geometric, right? Uh -huh. And then ima that. imagine that, uh, maybe one fifth of the way up the mountain. Imagine that it's just been sliced. Oh. Left to right as though, uh, as, imagine, have you ever been to a venue? Have you ever been in a context, it's been, where men and women of vision, of valor, slice the top off of a loaf of bread, dig out the inside and create a chowder bowl? <sighs> I mean, I don't think Yitzman has ever heard of anything of the type. But no, no. I'm, I'm familiar. Yes. Imagine the mountain version of that. It really looks as though whatever is happening here, this 
iconic representation is somehow able to take slice a fifth of the way up the mountain inter you know intercede themselves between that base and the crown of it and lift it with both hands whoa it's 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 strength it's strength at a cosmic level internally i i feel nothing but shame um because <laughs> my my muscles are a fraud uh but the the displaying the strength of a centaur is that's imagery that I'm super used to. So yeah, it's um, old hat, frankly. It's it is uh, it, lifting a mountain is not something that we usually do, but it's I like I think it's I think it's part of our purview for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 a part it's a part of the regimen. And I I gesture at it to anyone who's paying attention, and maybe that's no one. Um, but I gesture grandly at it and say, I could do this if I wanted to. It's just very important to me that everybody know. You got to put your brand on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. This could, this could be me if I worked out a little more. Wow. wow. Yes. I'm very strong as well. It runs in the braid in the breed. I mean, I thought I was strong, but that's a whole nother level. Oh, I believe everything you're saying. Thank you. I have some suspicions <laughs> and reservations, <laughs> but sure. And like, as, as we continue, I'm, I'm still muttering about it to myself, like a few more squats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're trying to, the same way you would like do it on an app. Like you're, you're sort of putting, you're putting the regimen, like in your mind, you're putting the regimen together that is gonna get you to there. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I don't even need this belt. I can get there myself. <clears throat> it's like right now, it's like I can lift one heavy dog. And then where do we get to uh, this? It's like, obviously, there's no question in your mind. Like, th there's going to be things that you don't know yet. But you know, deep down that squats are definitely on the road. <laughs> it's like right? What does our squat look like? <laughs> it's all four legs all going down. Okay. Yeah, like the hind legs. <laughs> Not just the hind legs. <laughs> oh, it's just like like rear up. <laughs> no, it's point. like a no. Whoa. The the center of squat I think is ultimately like a teeter totter type motion where it's like. Oh, like I this. like that too. Yeah. And that's that's a lot of power. A lot of strength gets built that way. I don't like thinking about any of the centaur locomotion. Like it really really bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they have to. They have to be able to really move. No. Yeah, it has to be realistic, Tristan. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, <laughs> got me. Don't ruin this. <laughs> no, they 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 dwell in the realm of of pure fantasy. <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah, yeah. So that's the that's the uh the information that can be gleaned from these sort of strange partial accounts. Uh on these stone walls as you travel south through this. So um, are we grabbing some platinum here, folks? Just snarfle up a handful of it? I mean, even Let me check my alignment. Of that, it's not hers. It's not ours. Yeah. <laughs> Let me check my alignment is the nerdiest fucking response to that. What? <laughs> no, I'm so proud of you. Why would you not, though? Is, am Why I a stealer? I, I feel oh. confident. I feel confident that we know <laughs> Evelyn's answer. Oh yeah. I don't know. I think maybe Quiver was the only one that maybe oh. did it. I'm neutral good. Oh, Quiver definitely would. I think he's chaotic good though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even the That's but, chaotic. But Quiver, Quiver's got those kits to think about for sure. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'll make a I'll make a a quick note. Obviously, there's some there's an industrial process that needs to occur. I mean, you know, the mechanics have to be respected. Yeah, yeah, it's like a microtransaction thing. Like you need to purchase the key to open the crate, you know. Um, but we yes. can revisit it in a flashback when Chris is back. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, but it has been indicated uh, on the quiver card. Excellent. Um, so uh, at the end of this, uh, at the end of this hallway, um, it extends uh, lit about thirty more feet. Um, at which point it turns uh, to the right 
And there the track extends out further. And that is easily 150 feet of straight track through. There's clearly a place there where it, it widens briefly. They must have found something. Uh, they must have found something they wanted to get out of the rock there. Um, but that's how it extends forward. To your right, the track uh, goes up uh, briefly and then curves to the left until it becomes parallel with the track you're looking at now. So there's a track that goes on straight, and then there's another track that bends to the right off of this and then straightens out to be parallel to that one. Evelyn again looks to Brian. A rat compass. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the rat compass seems to think that the uh, rightmost track is the most efficient. Um, but uh, after walking about 20 feet in that direction, you can hear that, um, that sort of slapping pop. It's almost like a crinkle paper. Like there's some surface tension on this creature that has an audible component to it. Um, and uh, the hallway here to the north has, um, you can see it like there's, an, there's like an a L-shaped elbow uh, about 50 feet forward from there. And it, this creature uh, basically sloshes around the corner. Like it comes around the corner at maximum speed and, and just lets that, the force of that push it down toward the, the party proper. Oh, man. It's like a blood elevator. <laughs> There's a scenario. <laughs> Jello. Yeah. This is, that's, that image is mine. Uh, it's copyrighted. <laughs> um, and I, I think that you would know that. But um, just something to Ch consider. You're Stanley Kubrick? Amazing. Yeah. I love Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I didn't see that one. I like the idea that they the had to use... The best one! <laughs> Is it really? No, but it's... Yeah. I like it. Most people no. don't. I like the idea that Stanley Kubrick wouldn't have watched it. He's well, like, ah, I didn't see that one. <laughs> I, I, like the I like the idea that they, that they had an orgy scene that required CG. All right, we're like going to have to table talk this because I oh, haven't seen any of these movies. Oh, and it's, I need it's, to know. Well, we can, I mean, we can talk about it. So uh, immediately uh, wheeling back uh, on his paws, uh, first from the quiver uh, and his rat driver, uh, peels south and then attempts to go around uh, the southernmost way. Uh, avoiding the avalanche of slime, of ravenous, uh, angry slime. I'm loving it, personally. <laughs> I've been waiting. It's like, because I have this list of things that Tristan wants in the game. <laughs> and it's like, this, this, we've, we've hit them all here, basically. We're, we're batting a thousand <laughs> on this. We got a party full of furries. Love it. Yep. <laughs> There's uh, slime. What there's else could you want? That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's, there's only two things in the list. And we got them dialed in. <laughs> uh, so uh, Quiver runs uh, around the, the, uh, the, the southern most of these two parallel tracks um, and tries to find their way uh, through that. Uh, there's a sort of center wide area that's lit and uh, that track travels from there and then it curves north as well but the creature is now uh, entirely filling the uh, the full volume of the tunnel <laughs> um, behind you uh, basically scouring its way through uh, behind. Uh, around the next corner, um, you can see an area that looks, this, this looks somewhat newer than the rest uh, uh, of the areas that you have uh, 
explored thus far. And it's differentiated primarily by the fact that instead of, they were not content to, uh, they were not content merely to embroider the walls of this, but they have actually cut back and through uh, into the stone to provide themselves with something that could be worked in three dimensions. Uh, so by the time the uh, by the time the party emerges here, they have come face to face with something the the that is novel, and it's novel for a reason. I'll I'll explain. So you can see statues of uh, Evelyn Marthane out front, uh, almost in a protective pose uh, between herself and some threat, which right now from your own perspective seems to be you. And uh, there is also a uh, still who is carved basically out of stone that comes from the ceiling instead. Uh, there is also a sword placed in the ground rising up. Uh, there is a prism and there is a quiver, uh, all on something that looks like um, a dais where the edges have been cut out of the ground. Essentially, they are inside of a square that has been cut out of the ground. So there's almost like a seam around this diorama of characters. Uh, I look at that and I go, oh my God, I have the best fans. <laughs> <laughs> They're already down here. <clears throat> well, and that's, that is prism. That's when the joy hits you. <gasps> Finally. I was just going to say, this is, it's true uh, for the purposes of the game, but it's also just needed. So yeah. we're just going to put the joy in here. Hopefully some part of this joy uh, leaves the game with you to give you a reserve that, you can, that you can call upon. Here's hoping. But it's right. good. It's a, this is, but this is, it's like, there's a lot of other statues and there's a lot of them, but there's also a prism statue here. Yes, and you think from where I'm standing now, it, uh, because I've angled myself, it is the central one. Even yeah. though <laughs> no, no, no. It's, one no those, it's one of those things where it's like, you can't like see the diagram until you look at it from a very specific perspective. Mm -hmm, and it's exactly. like, oh, obviously the center, it's like Evelyn Marthane is protecting uh, prism from some threat. It's right. It's, it's, and then the entourage. Really the, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, and you see, and it's like, you, you see this prism. It's like you have, you have an opportunity to sort of see it from an external perspective. And you know, you just, you know that you would be friends with her. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm loving it and uh, probably take notice of nothing else. Mm. Now, Jerry, you mentioned that there were statues of everybody except for me. Oh, there is a Yitzbin Attende. Um, <sighs> Thank God. As well, but not done. Oh. It's <laughs> just the, the front part of it. Uh, two, uh, two hooves sort of risen uh, before her. Cool. But the back half not complete. So right now, it's basically like the Seder version of Yitzbin Attende. Sounds cool. Um, can I ask Brian? Wow, who made these? And when? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so he uh, he marshals Quiver in and uh, gets basically gets situated by his statue. Uh, so Quiver and Mouse plus Quiver statue. Um, and then he squeaks out to you, places, places. Evelyn goes to her statue. I'm already at my statue, so yes. <laughs> done. Well, I mean, I haven't, we don't know what 
there, this has been a two person conversation. We haven't right. heard this anything. Is, this is all squeaks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's full squeaks. Over Brian to Evelyn's says, statue. Brian says to stand by your statues. Oh, all right. So, uh, as you stand by them around the, uh, essentially, uh, whipping around this corner, uh, is the, uh, heavy presence and weight of this uh, creature that swings around. And then as it leaps in to strike, as soon as any part of its pressure uh, arrives on the platform, the platform itself drops. It drops about 15 solid feet. Wow. Directly below. Uh, it slides almost just freely as though the weight is pressed on it. And as it hits, you've entered into a place that that's lighting is similar to the fairy fire spell. It has a, uh, it's almost like a, a bioluminescence. Uh, would this surrounding look familiar to me? I think so. Yes. I am stricken. So you don't need any help having a feeling at this point? No, at this point, uh, she just, uh, she just is like, <laughs> she takes all the joy that was there is like draining out of her. And she goes, oh no, no. I asked if we were going to go too deep and you said, no, you said we were not going to go very deep. And we went very, very deep. So it slams down and right over you, the weight returns and it is barreling down uh on you and on the on the stone facsimiles of you and then it stops about five feet over your head it stops and it is transforming itself into uh fists into the same battering ram uh appendage uh, that you've seen before and it is it is attempting to uh, crush its way through a, uh, some barrier of force that's not visible to you but what is visible to you down here is a very very different idea about uh, what a cavern should be. Aesthetically speaking, before we were talking about a situation where perhaps multiple designers, maybe they all uh, bid for the same job and they were each allowed to do uh, you know, their vision, but only 10 to 15 feet at a time, all in the same place. This has either been here or... Uh, it has been shaped by an alien intelligence. Mm. It looks like it looks something like a uh, a hive clung to by uh, mushrooms and strange floating lights uh, that uh, travel almost like a bloodstream throughout it. There's a horrifying moment where you consider that you might have fallen into a creature itself, somehow found your way into its gullet. Um, but uh, your, the, the same vision that you had, Prism, uh, before of what the thing fears, you see it now in front of you, and its scale is beyond, um, its scale is beyond the tiny, uh, just that little grain of fear that you plucked out of this thing's mind and caused it to run away. Here it is uh, in its full flower, a giant vat of unknown depth uh, sprawling out in front of you um, with a, a revolting stew of 
strange colors and organs uh, bobbing and themselves emitting a strange light. Man, you had to call it a stew. Yeah. That's <laughs> I, real I, rough. I, I'm always trying to put food in there. Yeah, but there's a time and place. <laughs> that was not it for me. <laughs> um, People okay. will notice Prism's distress and be like, Prism, what, do you know this place? What's wrong? Um, and I go, what? No, nothing. I just, it's just too deep. We're not supposed to be down this far. Look at this. And then I motion out to what we just saw, what we're looking at. And I say, does any of this seem like a place that we're supposed to be? Can I roll <clears throat> an arcana check to see if I know anything about this? Uh, arcana might not be right. History might be better. Okay. History, I roll a 17. Uh, 17 is pretty good. Yeah, this is this is clearly some, sh it's either some shard of the Underdark or it has been, uh, it, they have the same interior designer. <laughs> um, and you, you know that, you know this to be a, um, I mean, there are, there are creatures of good there mm -hmm. that, that um, are able to carve a life out of that place. But it is, it is not known to, it's, it is deeply, deeply unsafe. Brian, why have you brought us down here? <clears throat> <laughs> uh, you can sort of see the, these pummeling limbs fruitlessly trying to find their way through. And it's almost as though that um, invisible tarp of force uh, is sort of lifting and shaping them back up through, uh, back up through the hole and keeping them away. <clears throat> um, and it says, uh, I am Brian. I had to bring you here to bring you to me. Oh, and, yeah, and, 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 and even the rat appears to be listening to it. And it's, it can't possibly be coming from a direction, but the communication feels like it's coming from this um, eldritch instant pot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we making your acquaintance now? <clears throat> uh, you get a feeling of assent, but there's no yes that accompanies it. You feel it. You just feel right. Huh. You feel like you had the right idea and you feel rewarded for it. Um, uh, Brian uh, says that, he says, I have sustained an injury that has given me a conscience and I resent it. <laughs> uh, and thus on the very precipice of my godhood, <sighs> am I made your servant. I love it. <clears throat> and he says, certainty drawn imagines that she is testing you, uh, becoming certain of you, but the time is shorter than she knows. Though she and I do share a purpose, I would accelerate it. The purpose is the freedom of heroes to whom I and many others owe a debt. What heroes? Do we know them? <clears throat> uh, he says, uh, he says, they are four of them, uh, erstwhile agents of Acquisitions Incorporated. Uh, their designation was the C team. <gasps> Audible gasp. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I know the C team. I love the C team. Where's the C? What's wrong with the C team? Are they okay? <clears throat> he says the they have fallen to treachery. <gasps> not treachery. But they are not 
they are not lost. And we will find them. Of course we will. Shadow Council. May our labors please you. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump out real quick. We're going to have a quick break. Then we're going to come back for some table talk. Uh, don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Shh, shh, shh. 